All righty, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to uh, to a new Road Reflection, the daily video. I'm your host, Chris Mohan, uh, wearing, the, wearing the Brains Are Weird shirt here. Uh, Brains Are Weird, that's an album uh, by my good buddy, Zach Funk, talking about mental health, talking about uh, his, his life, his experiences. Very funny comedian. Uh, I think one of my oldest friends in, uh, in comedy. Uh, Zach Funk, uh, if, uh, if Zach does tune into, into this episode, uh, here's, I'm shouting him out, I'm shouting him out, uh, get his album, it's available where you're streaming and, uh, downloading your music, but I would recommend, uh, going and finding Zach on, on the band camps, uh, I had the honor and pleasure of opening for Zach, um, and hosting that show, uh, last year when he recorded it. So, um, you know, highly recommend checking it out. I'm very, I was very proud of him when, uh, when he recorded it too. It was, it was like a culmination of a, of a lot of, uh, hard work that he had put out. Um, so, uh, we're, we're in this shirt. Uh, uh, so I wanted to jump in and, and, you know, we'll, we'll dive into our, our regular standard, standard check-in that, uh, that I do, um, and uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar, those, those of you that are just catching up, I'm doing these videos uh, on a daily basis. I'm doing them every single day right now, um, which, uh, you know, at first uh, was, was, was great. I, I mean, it was like the first week that I was doing it, uh, you know, last week. It was, uh, it was great. I, it kept me motivated, kept, kept me going. Um, but I think as, as the week progressed and by the time I got to like Sunday night, um, I think I just jam packed a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. Uh, so coming back home from tour after a month long tour, having to do a lot of, um, a lot of like damage control based on everything going on with, with the COVID and uh um and putting out fires and you know taking care of gigs figuring out when to reschedule them so on and so forth and then jumping into doing these daily videos um which involved a brand new way of uh of scheduling myself and i've mentioned this a few times for for the people that do come in and watch these videos is this the schedule that i had kind of implemented for myself um at that time was, uh, was primarily like, um, you know, wake up, take care of breakfast, get into doing administrative stuff, uh, you know, emails, promo, all that till about lunchtime, eat lunch, and then move right into content creation, which would involve doing research, which would involve writing, which would involve recording, um, whatever I was going to record. And that would go on till maybe seven uh, sometimes eight o'clock at night, depending on how, you know, involved I was with the piece. And then from 8 PM onwards, um, it, you know, I kind of do, did whatever I would go. I would either go to the gym or I would go see friends or I would just sit and watch some Netflix and decompress my brain. I would, I would try to draw some, something or something like that. Uh, and that schedule was working really, really well till this, this fucking pandemic hit and I had to change, you know, what I was doing. Um, and that was fine because the way that I was going to adjust it, because no one's really booking shows right now, uh, because of the uncertainty of the times, we are trying to focus on what we can, um, as, as the, as the, the, the collective working class that we are, we're trying to do whatever we can. And, uh, so primarily, you know, what I, what, what my mind shifted to was, was, and, and this is probably going to change based on, based on the events of this week is I was, I was planning on waking up, making breakfast, immediately jumping into what topics and stories that I would like to cover, um, taking all of my notes, doing the video, and then shifting directly into uploading the video, staying in touch with people in the chat, um, staying in touch with people that are leaving comments um, during like the premiere broadcast of it, um, and then switching over to, to writing. Right, switching over to other content that I want to create, um, uh, and then kind of taking the evening. Once that's done, same thing. Kind of go till about seven or eight. Uh, spend that evening time um, doing whatever else I wanted to do. Catching up on more Netflix stuff. Uh, watching some YouTube videos. Watching, getting ready for the maybe the day after. Doing some exercises. Going on a walk. Um, things of that sort. 
Well, here's what happened this week. So I had this big realization uh, yesterday, and I talked to a few friends about it, is um, I usually the time that I take uh, to, to not do any of this stuff, to not worry about gigs, to not worry about content creation, um, putting up podcasts and so on and so forth, uh, usually that's Christmas time. And this year that did not happen. Uh, some of you might know that I'm going through a divorce. So that took precedence and then was right back into touring season. Um, you know, so I never, I didn't really have the time, um, or I didn't give myself an adequate amount of time to take the break that I would normally take, uh, during, during that, during that season, essentially. Um, and you know, I, I think we're, we're I'm going to probably face that again at some point. So, um, I was thinking about it and I think this is, this is sort of when it rains, it pours kind of a situation with this week. Uh, cause one day I had a really tough time getting through the day. Um, Tuesday was a little bit better. Yesterday was a little bit better, but it was still kind of really difficult to get through the day. Um, just to kind of get past like 4 PM, um, I, my mind would get kind of foggy and I kind of mentioned that and I kind of mentioned that I was, I was getting sick and I, and I, and I do think that that is, uh, that is definitely something that has, um, taken into effect. Uh, I'm waking up more congested every morning. I'm sneezing a whole bunch when I wake up, which is kind of normal during allergy season for me. So it could be allergies kicking up my sinuses, um, and creating this problem, but I'm also very stiff. Um, you know, and, uh, I, d I did try to go for a little bit of a walk when it was warmer yesterday. Um, but I'm, but I'm, I'm still pretty darn stiff. I, uh, my, my muscles are still kind of achy, which means that I'm, which means that's more of the effect of, uh, the sinus infection. It, if it's even an infection, it might just be that my sinuses are, are acting up a lot more, um, you know, now than, uh, more than ever. And the, so that, so it's, it's, it's kind of being burned out. Uh, it's kind of having to deal with this sinus issue, kind of having to deal with allergy problems. And the third thing is, um, I think I'm kind of going through a weird depression, which doesn't uh, happen a whole lot for me. Um, I don't really go, I have, well, I'll, I'll say it this way. I do, I haven't had a, a, a depressive episode of any kind in quite some time. A lot of my problems are related with anxiety and panics. Um, so I have, uh, pretty well formulated activities and like plans that, that work for me, um, to take care of my personal anxieties, uh, over, over the, over the years. So I, I, I'm, I'm able to manage my anxieties relatively well, um, through that. And a lot of it involves just me talking through it, right? Like what I'm doing now is kind of what I do by myself. Um, but I think the last time I remember being in this state was when I was like 22, 23, something like that. Right. And I'd been in this relationship for a long time with this girl and, uh, it ended and, you know, like I had these plans of like settling down and, you know, asking her to marry me and, uh, like quitting comedy to, to some degree right and uh and once that relationship ended all of these plans that i had uh that really surrounded the, the, the like the relationship was the central focal point of of these plans um i got super fucking depressed because i didn't know what to do uh i didn't know what direction my life was heading in i didn't know what direction i wanted my life to head in and i was kind of like lost and i think being in the circumstances that we are in now, I kind of feel that way. <laughs> and it's, it's, I think it's being amplified by being in the same space I was, um, or, or maybe that's the trigger of it is being in the same space that I was. I don't know. Uh, Oh, it's still a bit too hot, but, um, but yeah, I've, I've definitely, it was like, why am I not being, why am I not as motivated as I was last week? And I think it's a when it rains, it pours kind of a thing. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of in this headspace 
uh, where I'm able to do these daily videos. I'm able to get them up. I'm able to update my website, um, put up the clips for the week. And, uh, and then after that, I'm just kind of tapped out. And I think it's because these videos kind of give me a little bit of motivation and a little bit of grounding. Um, but, uh, beyond that, it's really difficult to get motivated to, to do the rest of what I would like to do for the day. And I think part of that is coming from this, this, this like reminiscent depression, um, that, that I feel kind of unmotivated and a little lost in terms of what am I doing, what my purpose is, that sort of stuff. So, you know, um, that's kind of the headspace that I'm in and I'm working on trying to get out. And part of, part of that might be, uh, what I, what I might need to do is shift the, the potential schedule and try to implement it over the next few days. Um, and what I might do is, is move like trying to exercise and trying to be more physical, um, earlier in the day. So when I wake up and get my breakfast in, I can, in, I can try to do my workout and then hit the shower and kind of clear my mind and get my head in the right space so that the rest of the day, um, I, I have a little bit more energy and, and I'm, I'm a like, I'm, I'm utilizing my physical health and my mental health in tandem with each other to, to move forward. Uh, longer check-in. I know. Sorry. Um, I'm a, I'm a long-winded son of a bitch. You, you, you all know that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that's, that's sort of, I think you've kind of seen as the week has progressed, um, a little change in my attitude. I'm sure some of you have caught it. Some of you might not have it and that's fine, but, but I'm, I'm trying to do these check-ins at the top of these videos so that we all kind of know where we all are and, and feel free to leave a comment about where, where your mental headspace is. Um, because I think we all need each other right now. We all need uh, to be uh, open, honest, candid, compassionate with each other and show, uh, you know, each other a little bit of understanding. Um, and, you know, we, we, we believe our, we, we put more weight into things that are actually finite, uh, like, like oil, like fossil fuels, right? We, we, we carry them and treat them like they're infinite resources and that they're going to be providing this like unlimited amount of wealth. Uh, but we don't, we don't take what is an infinite resource, like compassion and patience and understanding these, these resources that are, you know, they, and, and they do run out, but they refill themselves. They, they regenerate themselves. So it's all about thresholds in that sense. Um, to me anyway, um, but you know, be good to each other. That's that's an important thing that I think we could we could all use um, right now. And uh, uh, you know, um, if I don't respond to the comments right away, I'm doing a podcast today behind the bits. I'm doing behind the bits today. Uh, check them out. Uh, they did a pretty cool uh, panel discussion about um, how to help each other. Uh, what we're doing to cope through all this stuff pretty immediately. Scott was pretty immediate about that. So. Uh, I'm doing that today. And then last night I did the Assange vigil. I did the action for Assange vigil, um, which if you haven't checked them out, please do, because they cover a lot of news surrounding Julian Assange, uh, which uh, will probably be something that I cover on Sunday, um, uh, if not Monday, uh, is some of the updates that are coming out with him, what we discussed in the Assange vigil. Um, and, and really just talking about that because that's, that's, I think, becoming an overlooked perspective. Um, so I got to do that last night, which was really, really fun. Taylor Hudak, fantastic on the ground investigative journalist, independent journalist. Um, Andrew and Steve, uh, slow, slow news day. I have also been on Steve's show as well. Um, and Steve has a lot of interesting interviews that he does, um, obviously, because I've been on it. I mean, who's more interesting than, uh, than, than, uh, you know, the, the robed guy drinking, drinking tea to keep himself, uh, alive. So, um, you know, ch check those out. They're, they're available on my website is that's, I'm really funneling that to be the, uh, one-stop shop for all things me, uh, if you're interested in any of the shit that I'm doing, um, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. You can donate, uh, directly to the web on the website 
you can check out videos you can check out um, past albums it'll be where I put up my new album um, so uh, yeah check that out um, that's going to be the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan ramen noodles comedy.com r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy dot com all right uh this has been a super long check-in uh yesterday was kind of a big heady day for me but uh we're gonna dive into these stories we're gonna dive into these stories and the first one is we've been talking about it all week uh we are going to talk about this economic stimulus bill um that really has been proposed over and over again for the last two weeks because uh that's the thing that's good like this crisis is going to affect the economy one way or the other. And these decisions that this administration and this Senate and this House of Representatives is the, the congressional body that's in place now. The decisions that they make in the over the course of the next few weeks or, and including the past few weeks is really going to determine uh, what the, the latter half of the year is going to be. And I mentioned that, you know. We have to remember that in, in last year around this time, um, around maybe January, February, Goldman Sachs was, uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, they all called this. They all called this to happen. They all came out and said that in 2020, the economy is going to collapse. Now, um, I don't know if this is what they were anticipating. My guess would be uh, that it that it's not. And the reason I say that it's not is because before the complete collapse of of um, of the stock market, before there was a crash in the stock market, they bailed them out. One point five trillion dollars immediately bailed out. Right. Uh, that was before anything happened. So I think that was in order to levy them up and hope that this crisis would would kind of blow over and they would be fine with uh, with the 1.5 trillion. I think and I think it went up to 2.2 and I think it just keeps going up more and more. Right. The corporate bailouts just keep going up more and more. And uh, so then they realized that, oh, shit, no one's buying into this economy. No one's buying into this. They don't have faith in rich people anymore because rich people aren't helping. And that's what the economy is run on. The economy is run on faith and the popularity of rich people. That's what the stock market is. That's what Wall Street is. So we've been discussing how to help regular average Americans. And, and none of this to me is, is a massive surprise. I was just waiting to see whether this was going to be the moment um, that the ruling elites got their head out of their ass and was like, hmm, if we want to prevent some kind of, 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 of a crash and a revolution, we should probably flip the way that we've been doing things. We should give less to corporations because here's the thing, corporate heads, CEOs, CFOs, whatever, the people that are kind of in charge of, um, of the, you know, of the markets and stuff, um, they are going to be fine, financially speaking, for sure. The people in the boards, the higher-ups of all these corporations, they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. They're not going to worry about, I mean, they don't have to worry about what next month's rent is going to look like. That's chump change to them. You know, they make billions of dollars, hundreds and billions of dollars. You think Jeff Bezos is is concerned about you know, fucking where where his next meal is going to come from or how his kids are going to be fed? No. So why do we need to bail these people out? Why is Jeff Bezos asking for fucking donations when a fraction of his income can help the entirety of his company? Every single worker in his company can be taken care of. Because greed changes the... the, the, the I think it probably changes the biochemistry of your brain and makes you a lot more callous of an individual. But Bezos is going to be fine. The airline industry CEOs are going to be fine. None of these people are scared or concerned about where, where they're going to, you know, how they're going to take care of their families, how they're going to feed themselves, how they're going to pay for their their cars, their 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 student loans, their rent, their mortgages. You know, I 
So, the economic stimulus bill, um, there's still some things that seem to be unclear about this thing. But there's a couple things that have popped up over the last couple days. Um, Truth Out basically talked about the fact that the U.S. Treasury right now has $500 billion uh, that it can allocate and give to whomever, who, whomsoever it feels like giving it away to. Whoever they deem is worthy of this $500 billion, half a trillion uh, stimulus bill, stimulus amount. Um, whoever they, de- they have declared is the worthy uh, individual will we'll get this stimulus bill. Uh, the real question is, is it going to be American citizens of the working class? Uh, it, the evidence and patterns would dictate, uh, fuck no. It's never been us. It's never been the common working class man. You know, like w- the people that, that, that fucking bust their ass on a, uh, on a daily basis, the people that are on the front lines, the, the, the retail workers that had to deal with hordes of dick bags, you know, running through and, and stealing all the fucking toilet paper and, and hoarding it for themselves and claiming, well, this is my freedom. This is my right. I'm allowed to take as much as I want. Well, I think maybe freedom is, impeding, is, is an impediment to logic and compassion at this point. Um, but that's, it's not going to be us. It's not going to be them. It's not going to be people on the front lines. It's not going to be people that actually need this, uh, to help them out. It's not, it's not this, this could be an opportunity for the U S treasury department to take that $500 billion and allocate it into the checks that they want to send us the direct checks that they want to send the American people. Um, it, it could be a, a real way to stimulate, uh, the American people and get them back on your side. It, it, I mean, it would definitely be a political move for sure, but you could take that and, and make that happen, but they won't because they need to push that trickle down ideology because that's how you keep debt peonage. That's how you keep debt slavery. That's how you make sure that the American worker stays scared and under your thumb, under your rule. Um, so that they don't seize the means of their own production. It's, it's, I mean, that's, that's why they won't do it, and that's why they will continue to push that trickle-down philosophy because trickle-down kind of, uh, well, it doesn't kind of, it does push those ideas. It does push the ideas that you are not in charge of the means of your production, period. Um, so one of the things during the press conference yesterday with Trump, and I don't, you, you guys, I, I, I don't really talk a whole lot about making fun of Trump or anything, even in my stand-up, like I, I kind of steer away from it because it's one, it's, it becomes easy, easy jokes. For two, it's just, he's a symptom of a much larger disease. So I just don't go after him as much on a, on a personal level. I'd rather go after the system that created Trump. Uh, but this was something that was kind of interesting, though, is they said that Trump hotels can't get the bailout, right? They can't be bailed out by this thing, that uh, Trump hotels are not eligible for it, uh, so they won't, they won't get, the, uh, get the bailout. So his answer wasn't really an answer. It was very wishy-washy and um, a lot of, like, runarounds where he, he would get close to the truth of what he actually wanted to say, and then he would pull back. Like, he realized that he's going to say, well, of course my company's going to get, well, but, and then he would, like, pull back. You know, it was kind of interesting to watch, uh, because if you watch it closely, just in that one minute, you can see the gears and the loops that you have to make and how, like, you weave this web of lies, right, and how complex it needs to get in your head and how exhausting, really, it is. Um... So the thing with Trump, too, is they asked if he is consulting with past presidents, uh, because in in times of crisis and times of disaster, a lot of presidents have gone back to their uh, predecessors and been like, hey, what do you guys think we should do? Um, His thing was basically look at how bad H1N1 was treated, look at how bad uh, Katrina was handled and, you know, some of those things might be true. I think Katrina wasn't handled very well, and there was a lot of uh, bureaucratic stuff that got in the way of um, of really helping people. 
but he was basically like, look at my approval ratings. My approval ratings are fucking amazing. They're the best approval ratings of anybody ever that anybody's ever seen. Uh, and, and then he brought up his salary, right? He brought up that he has not taken his $400,000 salary. And, uh, and he was like, nobody, nobody said thank you. Nobody, nobody fucking gave, gave me a pat on the back, right? Which is just like, that, that shows me that he's still that fucking little chubby kid in New Jersey that just wants the approval of his parents to be like, good job, Donnie. You did a really great job, right? Like, he's still vying. Like, it's all about approval ratings because that's what he's seeking. He doesn't care about the American people. He doesn't care about doing the right thing for an altruistic reason. He, he wants to do the right thing so that people will think that he's amazing and great because he's still that same chubby little kid from fucking New Jersey that wants daddy to fucking love him. That's what Donald Trump is. And you can see it right here. He's talking about approval ratings. He's talking about people thanking him for not taking his $400,000 a year salary. But the question is, where's that $1.6 million going? Over the course of four years, you make $1.6 million. And where's that going? Where have you reallocated your, your salary to? Nobody fucking knows. Nobody fucking knows. That answer is, has, not, has not been given to us. And, and this is the same problem with the stimulus bill, right? Where is that half a trillion dollar, half a trillion dollar stimulus that the Department of Treasury got? Where is it going? Where is it going to go? Five, five, we do math on the, I've been doing math a lot uh, on, on, these, on these videos. But let's let's do the math, right? Five hundred. I don't even know if it'll get me to that. I think we are at five hundred million. No, I can only get up to. Uh, I can only get up to five hundred million. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me unlock my screen. We'll do the math. Okay. Okay. I'm at five hundred. I think I'm at five hundred trillion. Yeah, divided by, let's say, 200,000 people. It's like $2.5 million. <laughs> if you reallocated that to every American adult, we'd all get $2.5 million on top of the 1200 that they want to throw at us, which is still way less than how much money they would fucking spend uh, on, on, on their fucking corporate stimulus the gifts that they're giving corporate America. I might, I might not have the math particularly accurate, by the way, but it's a significant amount of money. To every American citizen adult, that would, that would change everything. But he doesn't really care. Trump, Trump doesn't really care. I mean, even that $1.6 million, let's say he reallocated all of that $1.6 million um, into, into some kind of a, a stimulus um, for the American people. Um, you divide that by 200,000. I mean, that's 80, 800 bucks per person, I think, is, is sort of what it comes down to. It's still something. You know, it's still a little bit of extra money that you could give us. Base, I mean, you're, you're you're bragging about not have not giving your your fucking say like you're bragging about giving your salary away. But he's a narcissist. That's what he cares about. He cares about his approval. He cares about how many people love him, and that's that's really what this focus is. But the, but right now, you know, his focus is on how many people love him. Um, Congress's focus is on this four trillion dollar corporate slush fund that they just created. Four trillion, four trillion, four trillion dollar corporate slush fund to bail out banks and corporations whose CEOs don't need this money. Who, when you when you give them that money, they are not going to flood that back into their into their working class. They're not. They because corporations can get can, can do whatever the fuck they want with that money. You give it to the corporation in good faith. That they're gonna they're gonna trickle it down, and they never fucking do. They never fucking do. You know they just don't. That's not that's not how they operate. 
Meanwhile, we're giving $1,200 to the American workers, uh, which can take up to four months, four weeks to four months, something along those lines. Um, unless you give your banking information to the IRS, unless they have your banking information, then they can make deposits right away. And I don't think anybody wants the IRS to have their banking information. Like I would rather, I would give my banking information to some distant prince in Nigeria first before I decide to give my banking information to the IRS. <laughs> We have to make we have to wait possibly four months for this um, for this check to come in, and uh, corporate America just fucking got the money. No waiting period, no lines. They just it's just in there. Here you go. There it is. Just do whatever you want with it now. There's no increase to SNAP benefits or COVID treatments. Really, there's people that are that are depending on school lunches free school lunches right now to feed their kids and you can't increase SNAP benefits for these families? Really? That's insane. That is, and, and then you're, and then you're going to sit there and worry, well, why don't people like us? Why don't people have faith in the government? Why are young people not wanting to vote? Here's what we need to do. I think if we want to get through this without a depression, I'm not talking about a recession. I'm talking about a total economic depression. Uh, what we need to do is go and look at Bernie Sanders' plan point by point and then fucking implement it. Just put that into place. It's $2,000 a month for every American citizen. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, maybe a little, I think it's a little bit more for families, if I remember correctly. Um, you you in, increase uh, the the budget for public medic, medical care. You use the Army Corps of Engineers and National Guard to set up massive field hospitals to and run tests for free. You uh, basically bolster the medical industry from there. Uh, corporations don't matter, and then you put an oversight committee to make sure that if there is any sort of a vaccine, any sort of medication that comes out to taper this thing. Um, that the pharmaceutical industry and the health insurance companies don't try to turn a profit during a time of a global pandemic. That's what we need to do to actually help the American people. That's what we have to go towards. The way that they are operating it now, uh, I think will, will further populism will further push people into into uh, a more populous territory. And if that's not what you want, look, I don't give a shit. I mean, that's fine with me, <laughs> right? Like, I, su I, I support most of the popular, like the left-wing populists are, are who I support anyway, because I think we need a government that's actually run by the people. We need a government that's actually gonna do what a government's supposed to do, which is take care of its citizens in any circumstance, whether it's an emergency situation or not emergency situation, I think it should be the American working class and the American citizens that are taken care of first over corporations, and that's not what we have in our system right now. But this will lead into more for, um, further populism, either right wing or left wing, one way or the other. You're going to polarize the country even more. Why did a lot, a lot of people veer away from somebody like Barack Obama is because they fucking lost their house under his administration because he decided to bail out the bank. He decided to use quantitative easing to put more money into a banking industry that had, that had outright cheated, outright cheated the American working class. People lost their houses. The fucking economy collapsed. The only way we get through this is if you flip the way that you're doing things rather than than having a corporate slush fund we have a uh we have a working class slush fund you 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 prop up the working class people i'm not saying write a check for 2.5 million dollars to the american citizen but that 2.5 million dollars per person could easily be we don't know how long this is going to be, and until we do, we're going to give you $2,000 a month starting on April 1st, and we're going to include a three-week um, you know, uh, adjustment 
to the, the work that people have probably lost anyway till we can figure out how to make this thing work. If you do that, I guarantee you a lot of people will start having more faith in, um, in, in, in the government structure. Okay, let's go to the next story. Uh, we're we're going to talk about Joey Biden. Joey B. Joey B's has been in the news. Uh, he's back, you guys. He is back. Uh, you know, he got his he got the CPU upgraded, and uh, we we got a lot of speech patterns from the Buttigieg uh, from from the Buttigieg program. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's taking well to the Biden program. Uh, maybe maybe there's a period of adjustment because there there's just a lot of. Uh, a lot of a lot of malarkey coming out of his mouth, if I may. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like I, I've I've watched these clips of him in interviews from his private underground den, you know, because because you know you know Joe Biden is the kind of person that probably has like a den with you know like a like a like a dead animal on the ground, a fireplace. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and a, a, a trophy of, uh, of, uh, you know, all the bills that he wrote to fuck over the American working class. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Joe Biden has had, uh, a pretty large sexual assault case come out, um, that has, that has hit the waves and, uh, and we are, I'll, I'll bring this up in just, just a minute is this is additionally to the seven that came out in 2019, about a year ago. About a year ago, there were seven women that came out um, with, uh, I think it would go into the category more of sexual misconduct with them. And I'll, and I'll address that here in a minute. But this, this case specifically is a straight up sexual assault. Like he assaulted this woman. Um, Tara, Tara Reed, Tara Reed, I think is her name. Um, she, she has done a couple different interviews and I watched the, the one she did on the Hill, uh, rising with, uh, Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jenny. And, uh, I mean, it's like, it was difficult for her to tell the story as, as I imagined that it would be, uh, to talk about this, this level of, a this level of trauma that somebody is going through, right? She's a former, uh, Joe Biden aide and currently a domestic uh, domestic violence activist. So she, she fights on behalf of people that have been through any sort of domestic violence, right? So, uh, the story is that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her, um, in the early nineties. And there's a, a lot of detail, um, that she gives in, in the story that, um, I'm, I'm not going to fully recount. And this, this, I understand this is sort of a touchy subject. So if this is sort of a, um, a touchy or triggering subject, then I totally understand if you got to tune out for a little bit and come back. Uh, 100% understand. Um, you know, make sure that you take care of you if something gets a little bit too intense. Take a pause. Take a step back from it. Um, but he, uh, she got a gym bag for him, and she was going to give this gym bag, deliver this gym bag to to Joe Biden, and uh, in in a, and they met up in like a semi private place uh and he like just went in and sexually assaulted her like went up her skirt and and um tried to like make out with her and stuff like it's just it it's a pretty visceral uh visceral account of what happened and then he gets pissed and this sounds very much like joe biden too uh she says come on man i thought you liked me which okay just because you thought somebody liked you doesn't doesn't mean that's an excuse for you to just fucking try to round all the bases as forcibly as you possibly can, right? Like, you you are at this point playing Little League Baseball with a fucking Abrams tank is what you're doing. That's that's essentially what that statement is saying. That statement of, come on, man, you I thought you liked me, so I should be... It is, it is within... Is, it is within my rights. I've earned this. Is like what a weird fucking thing to do, right? You know, you're you're gonna you're gonna crack the ball with the uh, 
with, with the fucking muzzle of the tank, and then you're just going to ride around, and anybody that can, even if somebody tries to touch the ball, you, you fucking fire a, a tank projectile at them uh, and, and just say that, well, come on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the home base here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wet this whistle, you know? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this? So she couldn't, I mean, as you can imagine, uh, you know, at a tale as old as time, she couldn't go and report this to anybody because Joe Biden was in a position of power. Um, early, 90, uh, early 90s, he's, a, he's a, you know, in, in Congress. He's a senator. He, you know, who was she going to go report that to? And who would do anything about that? Joe Biden is somebody that used his position of power to attempt to get sexual favors uh, from a attractive young woman that was his aide at the time. Uh, and then after he gets mad at her and is walking away from her, he goes, you're nothing to me. Cool, bro. So the Democratic Party's uh, presumptive nominee is apparently just an incel that just gets mad at women when they say we don't like you in a in a romantic or, or sexual capacity. That's that's who the Democrats have decided to to nominate. This is no different than Trump at this point. And my concern is hearing things like that there's going to be a certain part of this country that looks at that level of power that admires that level of power is going to look at this and say well this is exactly what we want in a leader um, someone that is you know a champion of democracy but knows how to use authoritarian force because we're, we have deemed ourselves the best and because we've deemed ourselves the best we are the best this fucking like ego driven shit this macho thing that is in this country this machismo that we that we revere so much um you know rather than being like oh wow i'm i'm so sorry i misread some signs um perhaps take would you like to go out to dinner with with me or, or whatever. Also, pretty sure that meant that you cheated on your wife. <laughs> pretty sure that means that Joe Biden used sexual assault to cheat on his wife. This is the present of Democratic nominee. And there's a lot of people that are like, well, he did some good things. He's a respected senator, blah, blah, blah. Sure, but his crime bill sucks. Uh, he worked with segregationists. He won't apologize or say that his mindset and thought process has evolved. Um, he constantly just evokes Obama like Obama was the, you know, fucking gold standard of presidencies. Not really. I think Obama tried at best. I would, I would, I'm willing to, I'm willing to give to that he tried his best and fell into the system itself. And gave into the system itself. I'm willing to say that much. But this guy's no different than Trump. He has horrific right-wing policies. Um, and he thinks that he's above the law. And he can use his and leverage his position of power to do whatever the fuck he wants. As of now, there are no apologies from Joey B. Um... And, you know, I don't I don't think that I don't think that there will be any level of apology either, uh, because every time that his record has brought into place and it's like, look, this piece of bill like this legislation that you fucking put into place has ruined the lives of so many fucking people. Uh, his response is, well, I'm proud of my record. OK, I'm, I'm fucking proud of it. How dare you question it? And he gets pissed off and starts yelling at reporters and shit. Uh, I believe that it would be the same thing. Uh, he he's, he's proud of his record, including the record of all the women 
uh, that he has assaulted by using his position of power uh, as a point of leverage. So, in 2019, there were seven accusations, <clears throat> right? There were seven women that came out and accused Joe Biden of, I will say, sexual misconduct. A lot of them were, was like snipping their hair, the, you know, and uh, hugging them, touching their thighs very, like, for way too long or holding, holding on to them just fucking just holding on to them for like way too fucking long um like people that are desperate for human contact they don't do this sort of stuff uh and basically at that point he flipped it around didn't apologize for it kind of blamed the the people that he did it to like he his his statement was was like fucking if you weren't such a if you weren't such a snowflake you wouldn't have a problem with with this he said he said something to the effect of uh, the gestures of su support that he's offered women <laughs> which is like what <laughs> what were those gestures sniffing their hair grabbing them and he was like, this is how I show that I care. I care by just grabbing onto you and being like, look at the care. Just look at the care. It's like, Jesus, Joe, there's other ways of doing it. Possibly by legislating Medicare for all. That would show that you care. But you're not going to fucking do that. And and this whole like victim blamey thing of like, well, the times have changed and you know, back in my day, this was fine. I could, I could go into a semi-private place and and try to round the bases using a tank. That was just, that was just the way that you did it. That was just the time that showed that you were a caring leader when you pulled your dick out and expected all the women to 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 suckle on it. That's just that's showing that you care. That's showing that I care, and that's showing that you care about me. It's just a symbiotic relationship. That's all that is. And it's not surprising that he went down that route because it, the, the last real coherent thing that he said was that he has no empathy for this generation. He has no empathy for changing times. Of course he doesn't. Tara, uh, Tara Reid went and tried to get, uh, you know, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, et cetera, et cetera. She went to them and was like, hey, this is the person that you're standing on stage next to. Uh, and Elizabeth Warren just basically said, contact your local reps. Kamala Harris didn't say anything at all. And look, I get it. You're Even if you're running a campaign and you don't want to try to use this to politicize your, uh, your campaign, the reason I make an exasperated sigh is that sexual assault, in my opinion, is an apolitical topic. It's a, it's a human rights topic. Um, it's how you treat other people, right? And uh, and that's not a political topic. That is a human rights topic. Um, you know, Time's Up, which is a 5013C that uh, tries to help people in, in Tara's position, um, did say that it was too political and that it might jeopardize their 5013C status uh, and tried to get her... I think they, they, the, the report that on, on Rising was that they... That the, they uh, said that they were trying to get her, invo you know, hooked up with a, 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 a pro bono um, lawyer to help her with that situation, but it was too political because Joe Biden is a prominent political figure, especially now running for president. Um, you know, so I think that I think I don't think it should matter. In my opinion, I don't. I really don't think it should matter uh, whether whether somebody's political or not, um, you try to unconsensually have sexual relationships with somebody. I'm trying to st I'm trying to say this as like scientifically as possible. 
without getting into like brutal terms, you know, because I, and I, I'm I, it, like the stories like this kind of piss me off a whole lot. So I'm trying to stay measured about it. Um, but it's just not, it doesn't matter, right? It, it doesn't matter whether the person that is being accused of these crimes is a political figure or not. Making a statement like that, um, that, oh, it's too political or whatever is, is just, it's just another example of how you let these people that are in a position of power get away with whatever you want. And regardless of whether we're in a democratic republic or not, this is authoritarian. Ideologies like this are authoritarian. To sit there and say, well, we can't go after this person. Um, we, can't, we can't even pursue the case. We can't even see if this is true or not and, and, and have, you know, due process for the situation to try to get justice for an average American citizen. We can't do that because this guy is in a position of power. This guy, is, this guy has a position of political power. Uh, to me, that's just, I mean, that's just, you're running into authoritarian language. You're running into authoritarian territory. So anybody that has a position of political power can just do whatever the fuck they want with and they can get away with it. Ooh, doesn't sound like democracy to me, folks. There is a there is another kind of weird little point to Tara's story as well, uh, and uh, uh, that I was just like, what the fuck? Like, how far do we need to go with this? Um, is uh, she was smeared? <laughs> she got caught up in the RussiaGate smears. She got caught up with Russiagate smears because she was writing a book or writing a, a, a poem and she wrote a blog about like Russian history um, from the 70s and 80s and uh, what was going on during Cold War era stuff. And she made a statement that she doesn't support Putin because Putin probably won't support her. You know, this guy is, has backed off on uh, domestic violence cases and stuff. So, <laughs> which is like... What the fuck does that have to do with anything, right? This is again, it's a politicization of 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 something that's apolitical, in my opinion. This is a human rights issue. It's not a it's not a political issue. So it's like, oh well, this Russia gator is coming in to to you know have these allegations against the the corporate leader of the DNC, the the de facto leader of of our, uh, of the person that we should, we we are indoctrinating as our leader. And then some of the posts that were being shared were even hers. <laughs> like, it's just like, okay, so that is... How much more do we need to prove that, that this McCarthyist Russiagate bullshit is, is not real? Is, is a fucking scam and a political play that means nothing at this point. The last note I'll make on this story um, is this. Uh, so Tara was talking about what happened afterwards, the aftermath of it. And, and the aftermath is that she lost a lot of self-esteem. And part of the reason why, you know, um, sexual assault victims and sexual abuse victims don't come out is because of that. Because people will uh, berate them or call them liars or they won't look into their case. They won't take them seriously. And look, this is super not the fucking time to do that, right? Uh, especially now more than ever. It's never a time to do that. Uh so if somebody comes out and says that this has happened to me, don't don't be like don't get on don't get on the comment threads and and get all shitty with them, you know. Don't do that. That's un that's completely unnecessary. That has no basis uh in any forms of communication. Like there's nothing like what's the fucking point? And the other thing I will say to um to 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 my corporate Democrat friends uh, that that are in that vote blue no matter who camp, Joe Biden is blue and acts like he's part of the red. I don't think your argument has any standing, especially now. The vote blue no matter who argument 
no longer has any sort of real viability. It, it didn't to begin with. I, I never really thought it had any sort of real viability, but um, now more than ever, especially with the news of this stuff coming out, uh, you know, it just doesn't hold up. Our final story it revolves uh, around the fact that so we are currently in, in, in an opportunistic conflict with Iran during a global pandemic. Uh, so amidst COVID-19, amidst economic sanctions, the United States is still engaging in a proxy war with Iran. That is f for fucking sure. <laughs> They are still bombing in Iraq and Iran. Uh, American and Iranian citizens are now being killed. Um, and if there was any time that we needed proof that uh, America has a war economy that is fueled further by the debt economy and that these two, these two versions of the economy work in tandem with each other, that's it right there. You have a country um, that is struggling, that can't get medical help, uh, can't get the supplies that it needs, can't, can't do what it needs to do in order to take care of its citizens during a global pandemic, and you refuse to lift your economic sanctions as an act of economic war against them, um, and you continue bombing them. Which means a portion of the money that we are spending right now, taxpayer dollars, uh, because your taxes go into the military, they go into funding the military and militaristic operations, um, they are being funded to bomb a country that's struggling to deal with a global pandemic because of our sanctions. How fucking obsessed with, with death and destruction do you need to be in order to do this, right? Like, how fucking crazy is it that you're just like well here's an opportunity our sanctions mean that their uh that their economy is weak and they're not being able to take care of their citizens let's engage them in a proxy war and see what they do and if they and if and if they lose great but if they fight back that means their citizens die which is also great because then it makes their leadership look shitty it makes their leadership look like they don't know what the fuck they're doing so you're you're pinning them in or between a rock and a hard place and and you're and and the and you're sitting there claiming, well, we're the good guys. We're the good guys in this situation. Fuck off. No, you're not. <laughs> Regardless of what you're doing, your active decisions are killing people in a different country. Your economic sanctions are killing people because they can't get medical supplies and they were struggling to begin with, and now your fucking proxy wars are killing people too. So on two fronts, you've taken an opportunity during a global pandemic to fucking accost and try to annihilate a group of people and commit genocide in a whole fun new fashion. Militarism during a pandemic is uh, quite possibly the dumbest motherfucking idea that you could ever come up with. There should be a global treaty put into place uh, immediately to say all military actions must cease. Um, all military personnel have to shift and and uh, run humanitarian aids. I mean, and really, the United States would have to take the bulk of that because we have a thousand military bases across the globe. Um, so that means that we can provide humanitarian aid through our military. Um, humanitarian aid via the military. So shift the focus of the military from being a bunch of killers to being people that utilize skills uh, that they have learned through through learning these skills, you know, through military and stuff like that, through, through the classes that they have to take and actually being a force of good and not a force of mutual destruction. That's what needs to happen with this military. The less it does, the more more all this is is a is is proof that we have a hyper obsessive 
American war economy f- and and with with working with this bullshit economic stimulus that they want to give us it it just funnels into an American debt economy we are further in debt because we need to funnel we need to prop up this this war economy to do what commit another fucking genocide in a country that doesn't need it during a global pandemic to to flex our nuts during a global pandemic nobody cares nobody fucking cares nobody cares how great your military is right now you know what we do care about how good is your healthcare system how good is your sense of compassion how how good are you with with planning and allocating resources properly and based on what I've seen, uh, America is not so great. <laughs> if we actually learned resource allocation as like a skill in school, people wouldn't be hoarding toilet paper. People wouldn't have tried to clear off shelves in grocery stores. We wouldn't be taking our bombs and, and blowing up fucking bases in Iraq and Iran. This, I mean, global pandemics should absolutely 100% mean a a a worldwide treaty, a worldwide ceasefire all over the place. If you your war economy won't fucking matter if you don't have an economy to protect, what freedoms do we have when we're all quarantined in our house? What are you trying to protect right now? What are they what what is what is what is the country of Iran trying to even do other than just help its own people and you won't let them? American militarism is, is, is an opportunistic virus. That's what it is. All right, we're gonna wrap it up there. I got, I got a little, I got a little worked up on that last one. I got a little worked up on that last one. Uh, but that's that's your that's your daily road reflection. Uh, I, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like, give it a share. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, make sure that uh, you know you're getting notifications, you're getting updates. Um, and and like I said, usually what I do with these, I clip them up. I clip each of the little segments up and I throw them up online as well. Uh, there's an audio version of this if you can't watch it on on the Facebooks or the YouTubes. Um, but the the clips, the shorter segments, are only going to be available via video because uh i have to uh, i have to upload all of them and that takes up a lot of server space <laughs> and that and the more server space you take up the more money you have to spend and right now gotta tighten up that wallet <laughs> you know so um i i i only have a limited amount and uh and these videos are you know i'm, I'm talking about multiple different topics so uh the the audio versions uh, i'm only putting up the full episodes of those but um, you can help contribute if you have the means to if you have a way to help i know a lot of us are struggling so this is not a necessity that's why all of my videos are available for free for everybody to enjoy all the time regardless of whether you can pay for it or not uh, but if you can if you have the means to donate you can donate at ramen noodles comedy.com slash donate that's r-a-m-a-n noodlescomedy.com slash donate uh, if you if if you don't have the means to that's totally cool uh, there's a bunch of other artists that I know are also in the same boat that are struggling they're trying to get through it um, so right now I'm gonna dedicate my email list to trying and talking to about people that you can support and how you can support them uh, whether it's just by staying up on their social feeds, whether it's by subscribing to their channels or a, a way that you can make some kind of contribution financially to them or, or not. So that's what I'm going to concentrate my email list on, uh, which you can join. You can join the weekly ones or the monthly ones um, that is also available on my website. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else. Um yeah, I think I think I'm I'm still focused on trying to make sure that my mental health is going to be taken care of. This week has kind of been a, a a a more of a focus on on trying to figure out how to deal with my mental health through changes to my schedule, changes to the way that I am going about doing stuff. So, uh hoping for the best. Keep my fingers crossed. Thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, and there another reminder is Sundays. Every Sunday throughout this whole thing, I'm going to be going live um 
And if you have specific topics that you would like me to cover on either the live session on Sundays or any of these other things, feel free to send me a message. Feel free to leave a comment. Uh, feel free to try to communicate with me in, in whatever fashion you feel is the best way for you uh, to communicate with me. And I will do my best to try to uh, talk about those topics uh, in as timely of a fashion as I can. Uh, so uh, I'm also working on a bunch of different written pieces, wordful pieces that I'm going to try my hardest to start getting out um, with by April. Um, w you know, hopefully I will get over all of this stuff, the the burnout, the the sinus situation, the allergies, and and the headspace funk and the depression that I'm, uh, you know, kind of going through a little bit here. Uh, but trying to keep my spirits up, trying to keep myself positive, trying to stay focused on on the now, the here, the present, what I can control. Uh, but uh, till tomorrow, thank you for tuning. Tomorrow is Philosophy Friday, by the way. Uh, so one big topic is what we're going to talk about. But till then, uh, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the road, you guys.